Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. This is Ghost Recon Wildlands on an old computer with a new video card. This is a loading screen and it's here for a reason, to show you how much CPU is being used just loading the game and to show you how long that takes, or a part of it, I actually cut half of it out. This is using a 2021 RX 6600, which is a great deal. You can pick one up for about $230 right now, and you can install it in a much older PC. The i5-6500 dates from 2015, and it was actually a pretty good CPU at the time for the money. 600 megahertz faster than the i5-6400 for about $20. That's pretty reasonable. However, four cores and four threads, even back then, did have its limits. It worked, it was functional. Hey, it's even functional today, but it has its limits. You're watching some of those right here. This is not Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This is Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ghost Recon Wildlands came out in 2016, one year after this CPU came out. And before Intel even stopped selling four core, four thread i5s, which didn't happen until the eighth generation when they came out with six core i5s. This is a stuttery, stuttery mess. 1080p, high detail, board graphics card, awfully overwhelmed CPU. However, I am going to show you later on when more has been buffered to main system RAM and the performance does smooth out. This is a first load after a fresh reboot, and you will notice that the performance is terrible, but it does get better the longer you play once the CPU has gotten the world rendered around you and it gets caught up. This delay doesn't happen on a faster CPU, especially one with either a higher clock speed, more cores, definitely more threads. An i7-7700K would make a world of difference here because it would get the surrounding open world loaded into system memory much more quickly. Moving right along to about three minutes after that previous part, we're going to be sitting here driving down the road, then I'm gonna drive into the water, we're gonna swim across, and I'm gonna show you as the performance improves, and we steal a helicopter. Don't worry, it'll be lots of fun. I actually like this game better than Breakpoint in many ways. Breakpoint has better graphics, there are some cool advanced features in Breakpoint which are better than Wildlands, but Wildlands was designed for the co-op modes. It was designed to have teammates with you, whereas Breakpoint was not. It was meant to be a solo game. They later patched that in when they realized that the fans actually really liked it. And of course, they made a terrible mistake. But because the game wasn't designed for it, they pop in and out of cutscenes. The missions aren't balanced for it. And honestly, Breakpoint became a bit too easy once you had companions. You can, of course, dismiss them and play it solo. But it really isn't a true spiritual successor to Wildlands because of the solo nature of the game. Now, to be completely fair, that's personal taste. Some of you may very well like Breakpoint more than Wildlands, but I also didn't find the story as compelling. I think the story is more grounded in the real world here in Wildlands. I think the story on an island with future tech in Breakpoint's a little, I don't know. It's, it's not my cup of tea. I have beaten Wildlands. While I have several hundred hours into Breakpoint, I actually have not beaten the main story of Breakpoint because I got kind of bored with it, to be honest with you. Once they patched in the extra, the teammates, I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome. This is cool. And then, you know what? If you didn't design your game for it, don't add it in because it just, it very much felt glued on. All right, that's not what you're here for. You're here to see some performance. And performance-wise, we have a whopping 45 frames per second average. That's depressing. Because this is running on DirectX 11, and because Breakpoint got Vulkan patched into it as well, which actually really did make a difference, Breakpoint now runs faster than Wildlands, despite coming out two years later. Yes, you heard me correctly. The 2018 Breakpoint runs faster on an i5-6500 than the 2016 Ghost Recon Wildlands does on the same i5-6500. All the basic settings, the computer, the graphics card, the RAM, everything's identical. The reason for this is because DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 are just, well, it's Microsoft. What do you want? They definitely are CPU demanding. You'll notice that our CPU is basically pegged to the max. Our graphics card is not. We are severely CPU bottlenecked here. Now, the graphics card does at times pop up to 70 to 80 percent. You can see 74 percent just popped up on the screen. Do not be mistaken. Because the clock speed is coming down into the 7 to 800 megahertz range at times, we just saw it hit 800 megahertz a second ago. There's 800 and change there. 
what's happening is that the graphics card is throttling its clock speed rather than throttling its usage. Now this makes it very, very efficient. Take a look at the power consumption of the graphics card. We're pulling 35 watts on average from the graphics card. This is a graphics card that has an eight pin PCI Express power connector and it's pulling 35 watts. It is absolutely 100% deeply CPU bottlenecked. The i5-6500 may very well run this game in a playable state. It may very well function, but it is absolutely the reason this game is both choppy and not running any faster. And this is something that I, I know I repeat myself a lot, and I know some of you are gonna say, dude, you said this in two other videos. I know, but here's the evidence to everybody who says, but come on, man, four core chips still play games just fine. Yes, they do. I mean, look at the results, it's playable. I played this game. In fact, I played this game for almost an hour. It is totally playable, but it's rough. It's choppy and it's rough and it stutters. It's not great. You can, but my word, this was not what I would call a great experience. It is a compromise in every sense of the word compromise. Moving along to another part of the battle, we are in a helicopter and we are assaulting a base. The performance here actually went down and got worse, even though it had gotten better earlier. And the reason for that is we're flying and there is a lot of enemies here. Take a look at our frame time graph. This shows us the real time smoothness or lack thereof of the performance of this game. We're dipping down into the 30s with a 1% low that gets even worse than that. And you'll notice that the graphics card continues to be deeply throttled. It is playable. I actually ended up clearing, I'm not gonna show you the whole battle. I cleared this base, I got the objective done, I found the collectible, I picked up all the resources. I was able to successfully do it. Part of the reason for that is I have hundreds of hours in this game and I've completely completed it and so it is what it is. One question many of you may ask is, well, why don't you just upgrade this to an i7-7700K? To which my response is, why didn't you just buy one of those when it was new and you could have saved yourself the trouble and enjoyed better performance for all these years? This right here is a perfect example of why I don't think budget CPUs save people as much as they think it does. They go, well, I'm going to save $100 on my CPU because $100 was about the difference between the i5 and the i7 back then. Well, you can, but then... The performance gets worse sooner. It's worth less in resale, and i5-6500 is virtually worthless in 2023. Have you priced i7-7700Ks? They're currently going for over $100. You can pick up an i5-6500 for about 25 bucks. So the price gap between the i5 and the i7 has remained about the same over the preceding eight years. So while you paid more up front, you get it back on resale value on the other end. And if you were to go sell your seat, your i5 CPU today and go buy a 7700K, okay, 6700, whatever, they're the same chip, 200 megahertz difference. And of course the K chips are overclockable. So if you were to do that, then you'd pay the $100 plus transaction costs just to end up where you would have been in the first place. I've said in various videos before, why doesn't everybody just go buy an i9 or a Ryzen 9? And I've gotten a lot of flack for that. People say, dude, come on, you don't need that. No, you don't need that. You don't need it today, and you may or may not need it tomorrow. But you are not necessarily spending more money in the long run. Total cost of ownership, what you buy it for, what you own it for, what you sell it for, and how long it lasts. I really do think spending a bit extra to go premium pays off in the long run. That's my opinion. Some of you will disagree. That's okay. But I think this is a really good example of where, okay, the 7700K didn't exist when this CPU was purchased, fine. An i7-6700K. That would have been four gigahertz, four cores, eight threads, overclockable, and it would definitely be running smoother, the frame time graph. The frame rate would be a bit higher. You'd be getting maybe 60 frames a second. But the most important part is the 1% low would definitely be better. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the other things. Check out the playlist link down in the video description below and let me know in the comment section what other games and hardware you would like to see tested. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.